today we'll be dealing with um, a floating point operation. We'll be converting an integer into a float in a delta PLC. So uh, what are float, floating points? In other PLCs, they call them real numbers. So these are kind of numbers like a number with a fraction or a number with a comma like 0, 0,5. 0, 0,5 is a, is a float. So that's what you call floating points. And then an integer, you know, uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, just those decimals, 0 to 10, is to 9, those are integers without a comma. That's an integer value. So in a delta POC, we use this FLT function, and uh, this instruction cam comes in uh, in two forms. We have got a 16-bit instruction, and then we've got a 32-bit instruction. I'm going to explain uh, the difference as I'll be doing in the ISP soft software. Uh, so I'm just going to jump to ISP soft now. Um, so this is ISP soft. Uh, our instruction is D is a FLT, right? And then load M1000. Okay. So this is an instruction that is always on whenever the POC turns from um, from stop to run. This becomes on. So this is our floating function, and it's a it's a 16-bit instruction. So let me write here 16-bit instruction just want to say ins so this is a 16-bit instruction why what's the difference between a 16-bit and a 32-bit the 16-bit is it's, it's because of the range it's because of the range so now with your calculator just punching 2 to the power 16 you get 65 536 and then divide this number by 2 if you divide this number by 2 you get 32 7 6 8 so minus 32 7 6 8 2 32 7 6 8 right but we are not supposed to put it with an 8 because there is a zero between this range so it turns up to be 7 yeah because on our number line we move from minus and then we get to zero and then we start to, to do positive so it means this instruction can only convert data from integer to integer the information that is only between this range within this range which means it can process negative integer values and give you float negative float values this instruction can perform negative and positive but within the range of 32767 if you execute this range it will give you an error or it will not perform very well it will not give you the right answers or you not get what you, what what you really want when you exceed this limit okay uh so i'm going to put instruction here i'm going to put a d0 and then here i'm going to put a d1 right but take note take note a floating point in a delta plc a floating point which is a result that we are going to get here what we are supplying here is an integer and what you are getting here is a floating point a floating point in a delta poc it occupies two consecutive devices by two consecutive devices i mean it occupies two registers because the floating point is a 32-bit data size in data size so what do i mean what, what i mean is um a float is equal to 32-bit size in size 32 bit size is equal to d1 plus d2 right so it means the moment my information is being converted from a float to from an integer to a float it's going to occupy d1 and d2 consecutive d1 it occupies d2 automatically the moment you assign a d2 here it's occupying d2 and the next device automatically so it's taking d2 and d3 automatically so i put d1 here and then d2 has been used that is already used because the data that is going to come out here is a float it occupies two registers d1 and d2 it's need it's a it's a double weight right but why is it on d0 i just put d0 uh, only because otherwise i was supposed to use d0 and d1 and here i was supposed to start on d2 but D0, techno D0 uh, is our integer side. This is the integer side. This is the float side. The integer side, the range of 3276 is a 16-bit range. So it's enough to put a D0 because a D0 by default in a Delta POC is a 16-bit 
memory it's a 16 bit memory registers so it's enough for our integer but it's not sufficient for our floating points that's why on the floating point it's going to take d1 and d2 uh, if i'm not clear just clarify in the comment section and then i'll explain more uh, don't forget to click the subscribe button don't forget to like don't forget to put any questions or any suggestions or videos that i can do for you okay so we are going to test now so that we can clarify what we are doing Okay, okay, okay. Right. Okay, I go online. Right. So this is what we have, and we are seeing 0, 0, 0, 0. But here, why are we seeing a 0, 0 when it's receiving integer on this side and giving us a number with a comma on the other side? It's because of the view. The view here, we must change it to unsigned. So if we change it to unsigned, it changes the format that you are seeing automatically it converts everything on the screen into uh, signed into integers so i'm going to put a three here or five let me put five right so there's five on this side so this side what this insertion is going to do is going to convert this five into a number with a comma so five is a number with a comma just five comma zero is good as five comma zero so if i change the view here to float you will see our answer is five comma save like that like that so the difference now between a a 32 bit instruction and a 16 bit instruction i'm gonna show you now i'm going to i like online edit i'm gonna do online edit put a new window and then write 32 bit instruction right in a 32 bit the only difference is the d D F L T, where the D is normally for double, it's for a double, double, double word. So whenever you see a D in a ISP soft, mostly wherever you see a D, it's a D move, it's a D add. It means the, the instruction that we are using there is a double. It's occupying two devices. By devices, I'm referring specifically to registers like D zero, like D one. Okay. So this one is a is a double, uh, and then here I'm gonna put so D1 is used, D2 is used because it's occupying two memory registers. So my next available free register is D3, like that. So D3 is occupying D3 and D4 because it's a double. This one is a 32-bit instruction. It's occupying two to the power 32 which give us like 4 million what 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 i'm not so sure the number and i divide by two it gives me two point okay so let me show you where this is coming from right so this is the range of the 32 bit instruction so i'm going to get this number this is our range this is our range so from plus to minus this number so we will see the difference now i'm going to simulate and show you so that it becomes very easy now okay it becomes very easy i'm going to download now right so i'm going to put the limit i'm going to take this instruction and test it to its maximum limit you're going to see the limitation of a 16-bit instruction and then you're going to see the advantage of a 32-bit instruction so what i'm going to do i'll change my view to unsigned and then i'll put um 32 7 6 7 that is 32 7 6 7 like that right so if you've got i put a mistake here it is a mistake it's supposed to be a 7 yeah, 32 7 6 7 so this is my integer value 32767 it's an integer value when it's converted to a float it's a uh, it gives me that same number but with a comma you see what if i put 32768 just just one one number difference uh i'm going to put a uh, 768 here uh it's already telling you decimal range but let's see what's gonna happen 32 7 6 8 
is telling me the value exceeds the range. It, so what what are you gonna do now when uh, when you're dealing with um with a with a system or your your program is measuring a tank or the tank is a fifty thousand ton or it's a fifty thousand liter tank? You need to show the weight. The weight is forty thousand. Uh, maybe it's 4,000, what, what, 40,600. You cannot do it with this instruction. So the only way is to go double. You come to this instruction. This one now is a 32-bit now. So this 32-bit on the integer is taking D3 plus D4. And then on the answer, float, it's taking D5 plus d6 right why why is it d3 and d4 because the number that you want to put here it exceeds this range of a 16 bit so definitely automatically it makes it a double word so i'm going to put change present value here i'm going to put that number 32 7 6 8 you're gonna see it's going through it went to it didn't give us that error for 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 out of range out of range so i'm going to convert this to float there you go so this is how you convert your float to your, your integer to float and this is the difference uh between a 16 bit and a 32 bit instruction it, it's only in the sizes of uh, the information that you are processing so I'm going to show you that for sure this number is now a float. I'm going to show you that for sure this number is a float. So we're just going to do put in smaller numbers like um, 10 here on the source. Uh, and then I put a 10 here as well. So on the floating side, we get 10, 10. This is 10, 10, 0. So I'm going to divide this number by maybe three and then if i divide by three it's going to give supposed to give me a number with some decimal places after the comma then i'm very sure that now i'm working with uh, floating points otherwise if i'm working with integer it's supposed it, it, it cannot give me a number after the comma so we going to say lord m1000 and then i'm going to put the division instruction for a floating point the division instruction for a for an integer is different from the division instruction for a floating point so we say uh, i don't know if i still remember the instruction d d i v i think so yeah yeah it went through right this is the instruction uh so i'm going to add the information in d5 and the information in d1 i'm going to divide actually I'm going to divide actually so i'm going to say d1 divided by let me put a three here or a seven right this d1 divided by the number in d5 oh i i have to download this first okay d5 uh, and then d my answer is going to be in d the next available register is D5, D6 is D7. So this D7 is going to occupy D7 and D8 as well. Okay, so I'm not getting an answer now. Why? Because I even downloaded this. Because I'm on online edit. After I finish editing, you must download into the PLC so that the microprocessor can execute the new object code now. Uh, guys, don't forget to click the subscribe button. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So this is showing us now that the information that we have, if I turn back, come back here to, to, to unsigned, to unsigned, you see there's a 10, it's a solid integer, and there's a 7, it's a solid integer, you see. And this number on the other side is now 10, 0 here, it's now 7, 0 here. So if it was a solid integer, we're not supposed to get, uh, we're not supposed to get um, a comma, we're just supposed to get one. Because it's gonna round off to the nearest integer, which is a 10 divided by 7. You get one if you are dealing with integers. We don't have decimals. So I'm going to change again to view two float. 
So this is how you convert um, your integers into floating points. And in the next video, I'm going to do a video of converting from a floating point and back to, um, to integer. Right. This is important because you don't lose your, 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 your data. You don't lose your data. Take a note, if you are to divide 10 into 7, you get 1,4. Imagine you are losing 4. You are losing 4 already. And then you get a whole number. This 0, 0,4, this 0, 0,4, it's very important in precision and in instrumentation. It makes a difference. If it's a percentage or a half opening, it's a difference. So it's very crucial to make sure if uh, your numbers, you convert them there and there to, to 14 points and then start dealing with 14 points so that you get all the three decimal places or two decimal places to the last accurate number possible, um, depending with your resolution. So thank you very much. If you have got any questions, comment in the comment section. Um, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.